Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Let's go into a difficult space here today. I, I want to talk with you about the emotion of hate, and frankly, it's one of those emotions that can go two ways. One of the things we know is that narcissists can get caught up in their anger to the extent that it becomes so powerfully energized that it goes all the way down to the far extreme of hatred. And they can have a lot of contemptuous communications toward you. They can rage. They can hold grudges like nobody's business. And then there are times when you may have some feelings that are somewhat similar in reverse toward them. But let's keep in mind that when narcissists hold on to their attitude of hate, it's not just an emotion that they can feel like you or I might sometimes feel, but it actually becomes a defining feature with respect to who they are. And that's a distinguishing uh, mark that we can have between normal people and narcissistic individuals. Normal people can feel some hatred at times too, but they don't allow it to completely uh, uh, take up residence on the inside to the extent that it actually uh, dictates who they're going to be. Uh, let's keep in mind that there are, in fact, some times when you can have anger and it has a legitimate purpose. It can lead towards assertiveness. It can lead for you to stand up uh, for what you believe in. It can cause you to say, no, I'm not going to go in that direction. I'm going to go in this direction instead. But when narcissists get a hold of their anger and then it goes down that path all the way toward hate, they hold on to it. And in holding on to their hatred, what they're really saying is, I've given up. I've given up on any thought that we can have a positive discourse between you and me. I don't think that you and I will ever be able to have a productive meeting of the minds. And in their giving up, they wind up having no empathy. It's like, I've given up trying to know you. I hate you and I have no, no need to, uh, to try to uh, think of anything uh, different from uh, the feeling that, uh, that I have. And they cling to their emotion or because they are already inclined towards judgment and shame. Uh, basically, in their hatred, it's like, I've given up on you being able to meet my standards. Uh, I've given up on you complying with me, so I'm just going to let you know how low and contemptuous of a person you are. They have an attitude of idealism in, in a narcissist's mind. They think, well, there's a really neat way that life is supposed to unfold, and I just wish I could get everybody to comply with me. But in, in, in their interactions with you, we can say, well, their idealism has turned sour. And basically, they've, uh, they've uh, declared within themselves, I've given up on any sense of optimism. There, there's so much about you that's just not proper, and I just don't want to go into that space with you ever again anymore. Narcissists are individuals who are actually sitting on a great deal of internal hurt. They have a profound hurt and pessimism with respect to life. And in their mind, it's like, yeah, and the reason I feel hurt is because of you. You've made my life miserable. I've given up on any possibility of love and respect that might show up between you and me. They've all, they also have an inclination towards constant devaluation and um, they, in their hatred, it's their way of saying, yeah, and I've given up on civility too. I find no reason to ascribe worth to you. And so you can see that narcissists in their hatred are illustrating that there's much more going on beneath the surface than just their outward pronouncements toward you. Uh, there's a pessimism that has taken up residence on the inside of them, and somehow it's all because of you. Now, let's understand that when narcissists come toward you with this mountain of hate, it didn't arise from a, from a vacuum. And there's one very large uh, uh, insight for you to hold on to that's going to be essential as you try to understand 
why these people go so uh, uh, far in the direction of hatred, and that is hatred is actually, for them, a delay tactic, okay? There's much on the inside that they really need to focus on, but if they can focus on things out there, then it allows them to delay looking in here. They don't want to have to do that hard work. So you'll notice that uh, narcissists draw much of their sense of well-being from whatever's happening on, on the external. They have no internal sense of well-being to draw upon inside. Um, in addition, uh, narcissists, uh, in their delay tactics, can uh, you know, whether they consciously think of it this way or not, they delay examining their own internal pain as long as they keep putting pain onto you. But really, their uh, pain that they uh, inject into you is a projection of what they hold on the inside. It's like, I don't want to have to look at that. Or, as long as they hold on to their attitude of moral superiority, which their ha hatred allows them to do, they delay having to look at their own internal inadequacies. It's like, I don't want to have to do that. Let's, let's just focus on you. As long as they can cherry pick their complaints about your character, it allows them to delay examining their character and how they got to the place where they are in their life. Or as long as they insist that you're supposed to conform to them, it allows them to delay trying to figure out how they're going to deal with diversity in this world. It's kind of like the hateful narcissist uh, has this notion that says, no, I don't do diversity. Well, diversity exists. Well, well, I hate it. I don't want to have to look at it. And it's all a delay tactic. Narcissists are driven by the strong, strong thought that says, I have to be in control. And so anything that you bring to them that they feel like they can't control becomes chaos to them, and they fear chaos. And when I say chaos, it's like, well, I have to have everything just inside my tight groove, and you're not doing that. But in, in creating chaos, uh, basically what they, uh, what they illustrate is the ineptitude that uh, resides on the inside of them. Their, their hatred and their delay tactics and, and all of the, uh, the unwillingness to examine themselves reveals the fullness of their emotional ineptitude. I hope that you can hear that. They have a lack of what I call emotional competence. It's like, I don't know what to do with my emotions, so I'm just going to let it run with me and it's going to define me. Their definition of self is highly defensive. Uh, the narcissists in their hatred uh, are thinking, I don't want to be like you, or I don't want you to control me, or if you differ, I'm going to make you regret it. You, you can see there, there's a defensive na uh, nature to the way that they think. Conversely, those of us who say, okay, sometimes the emotion can show up, but I'm not going to let it define me. Uh, we know that there's, uh, there's an internal strength that remains as an alternative that we can draw upon. Narcissists are reactive only, and so once the emotion uh, comes along, they, they just can hardly stop themselves. But when you and I decide, well, what I can do instead is I can learn to draw upon my inner strength, and when hard emotion shows up, we're not going to deny that it's there, but it's not going to be the defining feature as it might be for that narcissistic person. With internal strength, you can think, I know who I am, and I know the traits and opinions that I'd like to hold on to, and I'm going to commit to a constructive plan of life based on the, the opinions and the traits that I'd like to guide me. I see hate as an option. <laughs> it's, it's something I get to do if I want to, but it's not an option that I want to emphasize. If it shows up, I don't want it to be something that just stays with me forever and ever and ever. Or in your internal strength, you can draw the conclusion that says, when I experience something or someone that I dislike, instead of parking on what I dislike, I'm willing to consider my more constructive alternatives. It doesn't mean that you have to get along with everybody and just think cheery thoughts about them, but you can come up with notions that says, um, what do I need to do so that the hate is not just going to take up residence on the inside? And that's where we go into the space of boundaries and consequences and stipulations and going your own path, despite them saying you, you better not do it. Well, you go on your own path anyway. Hatred is a primal experience. 
It's just one of those guttural emotions that sometimes shows up and it's just there at times on the inside of most all of us at one point or another. But narcissists, because they're driven by such a powerful sense of entitlement, they hold on to it. It's like, you owe me and you haven't done what I say you need to do. And, um, and uh, when they hold on to hate, they're thinking, my hatred gives me a feeling of power and I've got to hold on to power. And they don't even realize that what it is, is it's like they're drinking that acid and it's, uh, it's uh, eating away at them from the inside out. So my alternative is to say, I'm going to recognize that hate exists, but I also recognize that there can be a very steep price to holding on to hatred. And the steep price is it, it leads to the absence of love. And that being the case, I'm going to say, I, I, I allow myself to feel what I feel, but in the end, my hatred and all of the harsh, contemptuous anger that goes along with it is not something that I want to give highest priority to. Ultimately, my priority is to love. I want to be a person of dignity, respect, and civility. And if you, Mr. or Mrs. Narcissus, can't join me there, that's on you. That doesn't define me. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good food for thought. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Hit the notification bell and we'll keep more videos coming your direction. Hit the like button too, that helps us. If you have a need for therapy, and many times when you are trying to sift through these kinds of emotions, uh, it, it could be very helpful to have a therapist assist you in sifting all of that out. You know that I've been sponsored for years now by the people at BetterHelp.com. Online therapy has become very uh, very uh, uh, popular, and it's something that can be quite helpful and useful. It's affordable and it's accessible. So if you go with link, uh, to the, through the link that we have below, uh, you know, it'll take you there to a whole team of licensed professional therapists. The first month is 10% off. And so uh, get the help that you need if that's something that you believe would be helpful for you. Likewise, I have my therapeutic courses and these are like signing up for an online class. Each course has many videos with written uh, documents with each one of the videos along with guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. Uh, this is me establishing those boundaries, free to be about uh, finding yourself despite those controllers. You know, we have my webinars that I've presented and they're still available for purchase, uh, as well as uh, my podcast. We have our uh, uh, our website with, uh, with many articles on there, and that's where you can access all the stuff that I'm talking about, as well as my books. And, uh, and so we have plenty of resources for you. Narcissists don't take the time to think, what am I going to do with my hate except to park there on it? And so that's on them and it becomes a defining feature uh, so many times with respect to who they are. I don't want to go that direction. It's, it's an option, but it's an, and when I feel it, it's, there it is, but I don't want it to be something that takes up residence. Instead, I'm hoping that you can join me here on Team Healthy and say, ultimately, I want uh, dignity, respect, and civility to be my higher priorities. And in doing so, it can help you on your pathway towards finding peace.